In this session, we will continue with the spiral die module and build on the four inch uh, die to process 150 pounds per hour of one MI LDP that we optimized in the prior session. And here is the spiral mandrel section with the section above or post spiral section, which includes a relaxation chamber and the final die lips. And we see that from the spirals to the die exit, the pressure drop is predicted to be about 970 PSI. Now, in, in, during this optimization, we found that we could get a fairly good flow variation at the end of the spiral, plus or minus 5.9%, and that this variation improved dramatically by the time it reached the die exit and reduced to plus or minus 1%, less than 1%, 0.88. Um, and the flow inside the channel uh, had relatively high shear stress up to about 55, 56% of the way. Uh, however, it had um, a fairly good leakage distribution uh, spread relatively wide. And um, so the only thing that was a little bit of a concern was the fact that the shear stress fell below the critical value towards the latter end of the spiral. Now, um, as I pointed out in the previous session, this up to now, we have been forming our, performing our solutions using the advanced solver, which is what we call a control volume solver, solver that offers a very fast solution that's, um, that's fairly accurate, um, but is not as precise as perhaps a 3D FEM solution. The, at this point, when we've optimized the die, we would switch to the expert solver and you'll see once you switch, all the solution here is gone. And you would perform another solution using a fully 3D finite element calculation, which is what the expert solver is. And we just click on that. Now, when we start the um, uh, expert solver, you'll see it'll take a little bit longer to perform this calculation. In fact, it'd probably be about um, 15 to 20 minutes. And that's why we don't use it when we're doing the optimization because we want to have those iterations to be rather quick. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause it here and continue this video after this um, solver has finished running. So now we see that the um, solver has performed 35 iterations, it took about 20 minutes to half hour. And we can go and analyze the results now because the results have been mapped back, back onto the control volume um, geometry. So for example, on the distributor here, we can go back and take a look at the pressure drop and we can see the pressure drop here is uh, 1,133 PSI. And if you recall um, in the control volume analysis, it's about 970. So relatively close there. And we can look at the spiral part outlet variation. It's still about plus or minus 5%. So that remains relatively similar, a little bit sh different shape in the curve, but uh, still there. And if we want to look at the correcting effect of the die lips, we can see here at the die exit, the flow variation is pretty close to zero, uh, plus or minus 0.1%. And what we were most concerned about was the flow inside the channel, in particular the shear stress, along the channel. So here's the flow inside the channel. That looks fairly similar. And if we go down here, we can look at the leakage. So the leakage looks like it comes out a little bit earlier and kind of drags on a little bit at the, at the end. So it's spread out quite nicely though. And if we switch down to our shear stress, we see that the shear stress in the mandrel is well above the critical value here throughout the whole region, even at the end. And this is because the 3D finite element method used in the expert solver considers all the velocity vectors in the, uh, in the analysis and determines the correct shear stress all along the surface of the mandrel. So you see that is uh, acceptable. And in addition to looking at the results in the standard viewer, the 3D or expert solver offers the ability to view the results in fully 3D. So you can post-process using a full 3D um, post-processor here. So here we have the geometry. 
you can see here it's in, in um, uh, full 3D. We're showing pressure. We can switch the variable here and we can show um, perhaps velocity. And you'll see the velocity in the channel as it goes up. And with the velocity here, we can do things like we can make a cut. So um, here we got uh, in this direction, we will come up here to this point, let's say near the end of the spirals, and we can clip the grid, and we can plot the velocity in relief at this point. And here you can see the flow variation um, in the spiral region. It's only plus or minus 5%, so it's you don't see it to be very, 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 very much. And then as we move along through the dilips, that will improve and become lower and lower. And there is the variation at the exit. So that's the velocity of the material coming out of the exit shown in 3D uh, relief. These results are being shown in the 3D FEM viewer, which has many more capabilities in terms of post-processing, uh, in terms of cuts and path lines, and even some animations, and allow you to look at the results of the simulations in much, much more detail. These will be covered in more detail in a future session on the 3D FEM module. Thank you very much.